Hi, Sasha. Welcome to the Smell Podcast. Thank you so much for coming on. How are you doing today? I'm great, Katie. How are you? Doing pretty well. Thank you. To, so to start off the interview, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Uh, where are you from and where do you currently live? Uh, my name is Sasha. I live in Wakefield in Yorkshire in the UK with my 21-year-old daughter, Ebony. That's awesome. And what do you do for work? I'm an accountant for my sins. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I've not heard anyone describe it that way before. So did you grow <laughs> up Did you grow up in the UK? Yes, um, not gone very far. Born and bred in Wakefield in Yorkshire. Fantastic. So can you tell us a little bit more about your smell disorder story? Uh, yes, um, I have perosmia, um, which I caught after, caught or developed after COVID. Um, April 2020, I decided to fly my 80-year-old mum back from Alicante in Spain, where she's lived for the last 15 years because she's on her own I didn't want her to be there on her own should she get ill when the virus became very prevalent in Italy and then further into Europe and it got to Spain um, I kind of thought that she would be all right but there was always a chance that I wouldn't be able to get to her if she did become ill so I put her on the last flight that there was from Alicante back to the UK and it was the worst decision that I made because she caught it on the plane. Um, mm. We found out later that um, all 60 of them that were on the plane, I think there was eight that didn't catch it, clearly went through the air conditioning system or was to that effect. I don't know. I don't. I, ha I have no definitive proof, but I do know that all of them, the majority of them, even the staff on the plane, um, caught COVID. Um, I picked mum up and she was fine for two days. And on the third day, I couldn't get her out of bed. Um, my mum's very active. She walks um, long for long walks every single day. And by day three, when I couldn't get her out of bed, I thought she's just got run down. Um, she had no cough. She had no temperature, uh, but I couldn't get her to eat. Um, and then her stomach started to get bad. And then it was as if she got last stages of dementia very, very quickly, because by day five, I was having to carry her to the toilet. Um, I was sharing toast with her. I was trying to get her to drink tea. Um, my mum, uh, when they get to a certain age, that she is on a lot of medication. She has COPD. She has a, a lot of heart conditions and she takes warfarin and I couldn't get her to take a medication. So I rang um, paramedics, which we were advised to do here if you couldn't get through to the local number that we were all told at that time to ring you know don't ring an ambulance ring this local number and somebody over there to help well when you sat online for an hour and a half and you, you know your mum in my eyes was fading before my eyes yet she had no cough no temperature um I rang the paramedics and said I want an ambulance I want somebody to come and see her and they refused to come out because they were very busy understandably and I said look I'll, I'll leave her another 24 hours then and the next day, um, I couldn't get her to get out of bed again, couldn't get her to eat, still no cough, still no temperature. She could still smell and taste everything. She just refused to eat it, refused to take her tablets. It was like she'd aged another 20 years in, in a space of three or four days. And that evening, when I couldn't get her to take her medication, I put a thermometer in her mouth. And for the first time, it went up and it was 104. Um, I'm sorry, we, we use um, different degrees, don't we, from here in the UK to you over there. But it, it was it was hella high. Yeah, and, is that Fahrenheit? Um, that sounds like yeah, Fahrenheit. Yeah. 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 Um, so I rang an ambulance again and they said to me, um, they came in with all the PPE on and they said, you know, we're going to make your mum sign a DNR because if it is COVID, you know, we can't, we won't resuscitate her. And that was the worst thing ever, was saying goodbye to her. And I knew I wouldn't be able to see her. And the chances, because of the news then at the time, was that people just didn't survive it. Um, so she left in the ambulance and I said goodbye. And I never heard anything. I couldn't get through to the hospital for another 72 hours. And it was the worst 72 hours of my life. But in that period of time... I suddenly started sneezing. Now, sneezing was not, and to this day, still isn't a thing to do with COVID. 
and um, I thought I'd got some kind of allergy or my stress had made me sneeze. I don't suffer from allergies. I'm very fortunate that, um, albeit I'm asthmatic, um, I don't, I'm not really allergic to anything in particular um, mm. other than dogs, albeit there's one sat on my knee. Um, so I was this sneezing carried on for, for all the time that mum was in hospital. And when I, obviously I managed to speak to mum on day four or five of her being there, and it was the best thing ever because somebody had handed her a phone and they said to me, your mum's going to get better. And I was just over the moon. Um, and probably a couple of days later after that, my smell went. But if we think back, smell and taste or sneezing and congestion were absolutely nothing to do with COVID whatsoever. Um, day 10, my mum still tested positive for COVID and the hospital rang me and said, we're bringing her home. And what there's been a great dispute over in the UK is that at the beginning uh, of this pandemic, care home residents, elderly, were being taken back out of hospital, COVID positive. I was told to wear a mask. I was told to wear gloves. I was told to not go near my mum. Albeit, I said to them, look, I carried her to the loo. I shared toast with her. You know, I did. So it's a bit late now. But nevertheless, when she did come out of hospital, I was absolutely frightened stiff. Um, did 14 days from the day she came home. But I never had any other symptoms other than I couldn't smell anything. And mm. I'd randomly sneeze. Um, so unfortunately, my smell and taste went back to in April of 2020. And it just didn't come back at all until faintly in August, um, I remember saying to mum when she was getting better, she'd say, oh, make this food. And I'd say, it, does it smell all right? Because I still can't smell anything. I did actually, not intentionally, uh, make her quite poorly with some gone off milk um, mm. because I realised it had gone off. Um, and also I'd made her a sandwich one day and she said, this doesn't smell right. And I said, well, I still can't smell anything. But if you fast forward to August, kind of, very florally smells came back to me um, and then the following month in September I was putting on my favorite perfume as always couldn't smell it and on this occasion I could smell it and it smelled horrific mm. and it's not um it's um it, it wasn't it's not a floral perfume I seem to be fine in August with actual floral smells that was the only thing I could put pin down that I could actually smell properly um but this perfume smell absolutely rancid to me. So I thought it's gone off and then you do what you normally do and you take it to said mum who you're still taking care of and said, is that all right? And she just said, it smells perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. um, and so needless to say, I was I said that, well, there's something wrong with my nose then because that smells horrible to me. About a week later, my daughter came back to live at home with uh, myself and my mum and I was peeling an orange and this orange, I, I, I convinced the whole household that there was something wrong with the oranges and you must not eat these oranges. And then thirdly, um, without, you know, without being trying to be too polite about it, I, when I went to the toilet and I pooed, it smelled exactly the same as my perfume and the orange. And that's when I knew that something was really wrong with my nose and that albeit I could smell certain floral things everything else smelt the same and it was a all I can describe it is is sickly but sweet yet if you if you ever have pets in your house and they've ever brought a dead animal in and you've not realized it it had that dead dead smell to it it, it mm -hmm. is it's vile that's all I can put it down to and over the course of a month from September maybe to the end of October, every day, something else would smell of it. And now it's literally most things other than fish. Um, I can't smell fish, but it doesn't smell of my horrible smell, which <laughs> I know a lot of people have put a name of COVID smell to it. And, and that's wrong because there's a lot of perosmics that have dealt with this for years from head trauma or from Parkinson's, and they don't call it COVID smell. But we COVID perose mix are saying it's a covid smell because it's tied to having covid um 
I then had was offered an antibody smell when I went to my doctor and said there's something really wrong with me and and they said have some steroids do this nasal spray have this have that and I am I am not a tablet taker or um, an antibiotic taker at all but I tried literally everything they gave me and if anything it made it worse where I can't stand poultry onions garlic a lot of seasoning everything then begin it was like they'd opened up my nasal passage to everything else being damaged um, by having all these medications that they, they said oh give this a go um, and when I rang the doctor and said, look, I've done my own research, I think it's parosmia, they just said, well, there's nothing we can do. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I, you say, um, as long as I know that parosmia can come from head injury or Parkinson's, unfortunately. And the, the one thing that um, most people would immediately worry about is, have I got early onset Parkinson's? So I said, is there any test for it? And they said, we can't see you, we can't do anything else about it. So, you know, you're just going to have to deal with it. And albeit in December, I still had antibodies from COVID. And three weeks ago, the beginning of January, I still had antibodies, which I'm very grateful for. The parosmia is still as bad as it was last September. Wow, that, <clears throat> that entire story just sounds so overwhelming. overwhelming. Well, one thing that stuck out to me when you were talking is, had you ever heard about anosmia or parosmia before contracting COVID-19? No, not at all. No. And it, another thing that sticks out to me is that it sounds like you had to discover those terms for yourself. Those weren't explained to you by your healthcare providers. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I wasn't offered any help at all apart from nasal steroids or antibiotics because I still have now at least twice a week, the constant sneezing and congestion. And I think you guys call it nasal drip, which we don't we, we, we don't recognize that in the UK. And I, and I had to look at what a nasal drip was, but I definitely have that as well. Um, but now I don't even bother my doctor because he does, they don't want to know. They, they have no time for me. And I get that because people are dying in their hundreds still in the UK. We're in a mess here. Um, but still, I am a very big advocate. I have done a lot of promoting that at some point, somebody needs to help us because if it is the nerves that have been damaged that are trying to repair, yet because of COVID, they don't repair, then what does that mean for us all? And there's mm -hmm. thousands of us. Hey, thanks for listening to The Smell Podcast on YouTube. Make sure that you connect with the podcast on social media. You can find me online at thesmellpodcast.com or on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at The Smell Podcast. Can't wait to see you there. That leads me to another question for you. What did you do? Like, uh, when, and I mean, by that, I mean, like, how did you cope with this? Where did you go? Did you go online? Did you talk to your friends? Like, can you talk a little bit more about how you managed to cope through this? Well, I'm still working and I go into an off a particular office because I work for various people, but I go into an office um, three times a week and for various different companies. And each of those I've gone in um, since September and said, I think there's something wrong with me. I think I might be dying. And, and gratefully, one of my bosses said, let's spend at least two hours of this morning researching it. And he helped me find parosmia. And, but if I hadn't have done that, and I'd have kept ringing my, what you call healthcare provider, I would have, I'm sure, just been given more steroids or more nasal sprays. But all the research that I did, I had to do online. I had to find it for myself. Um, and knowing that I had a positive antibody test, albeit well, we can pretty much presume that I was COVID positive in April from mum. All that time in between, there, there was a good chunk at the beginning where smell and taste were nothing to do with COVID at all. It was it was dismissed in the UK quite vehemently at the beginning. Um, and on my research, I realised that I, being one of the lucky ones, that the when the virus enters the nasal passage, it's killing the olfactory nerves 
yet it's protected my lungs because mum never lost her smell and taste at all throughout her illness. And I mean, she's still, she's suffering from long COVID herself now, but smell and taste have never come into it. So albeit through research, I'm very grateful that it didn't go onto my lungs. If it's killed the nerves that dramatically, what else has it done in my brain? And that yet I haven't got the answer to, apart from I'm unsure whether you're aware, but they have been doing um, tests on people that have died and mm -hmm. they've actually found tiny brain bleeds in the ones that have lost their smell and taste. So I'm left here thinking, what, what, okay, if it's doing this to me almost a year on, what else is it doing in my brain and to my nerves? Um, what else is it destroying? Um, but only time, and I have the patience of a saint, thank goodness. And I have to say, I've kind of resigned myself to the fact that I'm not going to get better tomorrow or next week. Um, and I just deal with it. I hate cooking. I hate eating. I lost a lot of weight from October to December because I literally, the nausea was overwhelming by mm -hmm. the smell of food. Um, but since then, I now... There are things that I literally won't go near, but I eat my, I have to eat to, to keep healthy or else I'll be the one in hospital. And I, and I know of a few people that have ended up in hospital because of porosmia. Um, another story, but yeah, I, I know at least one young girl who's become really ill from it. So I kind of eat my way through it and I keep doing the research and I keep looking for answers, but I'm just fully aware I'm not going to really get them just yet. Yeah. So that actually, you mentioned something that I was going to ask you about in particular is how you think the your experiences with the, these smell disorders, both anosmia and parosmia, have impacted your relationship with food and eating. So it sounds like it has become quite a struggle. Oh, um, it's, hor it's horrible. Every day it's horrible. Every day I don't, and I loved cooking and um, mum has since gone back to Spain and now I'm trying to get hold at home again but I, I love cooking for my daughter my daughter's a big foodie as well um, she's not had Covid and she kind of she tolerates me um, but it it impacts every single day it's just you get used to it impacting every single day it's not a shock to me anymore like it is to those that I see online that are, have just developed it last week or last month. Mm -hmm. it, it's horrendous that we're just going to have to get used to this. Yeah. So one one question that comes up for me, you mentioned that you had spoken with your employers about this scenario, mm -hmm. but when smell comes up for you in your daily life, I know that right now we're not really out and about very much, but when you are and it comes up, do you take the time to explain to people what you're experiencing with anosmia and parosmia? I guess now it's just parosmia. Yeah, it, 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 um, there are still things that I can't smell. Okay, gotcha. It's bizarre. So I have a no smell or I have a my, my smell, I call it. Distorted, um, yeah. Yeah, um, but I, I did. Uh, when I was all gung-ho about this before Christmas and I must get the word out there, there's thousands of us, Everybody that I spoke to and they would say, oh, how are you today, Sasha? And I would go into this chapter and verse about what was wrong. Now, I just say, oh, I'm fine. You know, mm -hmm. because people, literally people look at you, including my daughter. When I had the issue with the orange back last year, they looked at me like I was an alien. They were mm -hmm. like, it's an orange. It smells of an orange. And I was sat there going, no, it doesn't. It really doesn't. I think that the mo I think the worst for me is the fact that my toilet habit smells so wrong. Mm. And, yeah. I, and I think to myself, is there something wrong with me inside as well? I think it's more, I don't tell people because I have this fear now that there's something else going wrong and I right. don't know what it is. So now I just don't tell people at all. Yeah, it's really scary. I personally have um a an complete anosmia since about 2009 and i have also not experienced any parosmia for which i'm very grateful because i hear stories from people like you and others online and in the support groups and that sounds to me much worse than just nothing i would rather have nothing i would right. go back to nothing in a heartbeat 
than I've heard. because you can eat through it. I know yeah. it's not pleasant and I know it's alarming and, and I do see on the same support groups, you know, that all these people that are, oh, did you, I don't know whether you've seen the latest one as a chiropractor who is flicking the back of people's heads and, you know, I, I, I have a really friendly uh, chiropractor and I sent him the video and he just, he literally laughed and he said, Sasha, you know, you're not going to, this is for, the, the, this technique is for people with anosmia, you know, you, you put your hand on your heart and he flicks the back of your head and he said, really, you know, do, do you not think that anybody with nerve damage over years wouldn't have just flicked the back of the head if that was going to work? But mm. yet we're all, we're all stood there with a hand on our heart trying to flick the backs of our head to get it back. And I know a nose smear is, is scary because you don't, it's alarming that you don't know if there's danger or like me with my mum and the tea, you don't know if something's gone off. But to then switch it to something that is, oh, it, I wish I could describe the smell. I personally would go back to no smell tomorrow. Yeah, I've and heard that before. That, that's so, not that's not an uncommon sentiment from people that I've spoken with. Where did you lose? How did you lose yours in two thousand and nine? Um, I had a post viral infection, so I had an upper respiratory infection, um, virus related, and then at that after that point, I couldn't smell anymore. So it, it's not COVID related, um, but that is, is the best guess of what happened to me. Is it literally everything? There's n you can't. There's no faint. If you get on top of it the essential oils that they tell us all to smell, which the floral ones, I can smell quite well now. It's not Yeah, it's literally nothing. Nothing. Oh, mm -hmm. for you. Um, I, I'm used to it now. That's part of the, one of the things that is really great about the podcast is like sharing listener stories. I think it's fascinating to hear how each of us has our own individual experiences. So some people have hyposmia where they can smell faintly. Some people have complete anosmia like myself. Um, and then others are experiencing things like parosmia and phantosmia. So that's one of one of the yeah. things that I actually really enjoy is, is hearing about other people's experiences as well. Yeah. So this next question that I have for you, there's no wrong or right answer, but it is a question that I like to ask everyone. Mm -hmm. Do you self-identify now as having a disability with these smell disorders? Uh, whew, now that I've seen that question asked quite a lot on the support groups, you know, can I, it, it is a disability. Yes, I see it as a disability, but not in order to gain anything from it. Mm. That makes that's sense. People that are advocating that there should be something that goes along with said disability. You know, I, I don't need a crutch. I can walk. I can drive. I can do everything that I did before and I can still cook and I can still make myself, if I really wanted to, eat those things that are smell the same as what happens to me on the toilet. I could force myself to do that. Yes, it's a disability, but it's not disabling, I think is the best way I can answer that one. That's a great answer. Thank you. <laughs> what would you like people who do not have a smell disorder to know about what it's like having one? People as a whole? Yes. Then I, I'm a great advocate to get the word out there of people that have suffered with COVID and are getting this as a result of that they are not alone and that there are hundreds of thousands of us now. Um, getting the word out, <laughs> all I want to see is that when this vaccination rolls out and the thousands of us that are suffering with long COVID of one thing or another, that a lot of money is pumped into research because albeit you have been like that since 2009, I think if I'm still like this in another 10 years, I may think differently. I'm, I'm, I'm far too hopeful that there will be an end result at the minute. But if I'm 10 years down the line and nothing has been done and there isn't the research and the pandemic is over and we've all been vaccinated and everybody's getting on with our lives, and yet there's hundreds of thousands of us that are still waving our hands in the air saying, wait, I'm not better yet, then that word I really would put out there tomorrow, I will put it out there. Please don't forget that there are thousands of us still suffering. Yeah, no, I think that's a really good, a really good answer. And I do think that, COVID, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> let me repeat that. So I do think that COVID-19 has been horrible 
And there are so many things that have happened from it that have just been disastrous for a lot of people with just the amount of loss and things like that. But if there is any positive aspect of it, it's the fact that people are now aware that it can impact your smell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, you know, with the, the thousands of us that are in these support groups are living proof of that. It, it's, it's done some very real damage to our nerves. Um, I, I'm, I'm hoping that the scientists that I've watched on absence um, are correct in saying that the perosmere is a result of them trying to be to repair themselves. Um, but as yet, they don't know whether there will be an end result to that. And only time is going to tell, isn't it? Because mm. literally all we can do and all I say to people when I, I used to answer, try and answer everybody on the support groups all the time, say, don't worry, you're not alone. And this is my story and everything. And now I just now I just say, look, it's not a shock to me anymore. The shock will wear off with you. But we're all still here. It's all still just as bad. It's just not as much of a shock now. Mm, yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned Absent. Um, they do have some very fantastic resources available for people, and mm -hmm. specifically the um, Absent Prosmia Facebook page. Yes, yes. And their YouTube. I mean, their, their YouTube. They, you, you have to like a long video because, wow, those people could talk. And half of it you don't understand. But the bits in between that you pick up on the research that they're doing for anosmia and perosmia are the best research that we have. And this is just a, you know, they, these are scientists that have, are taking their own time to do this. I don't know whether they're a non-profit, but, you know, these people are sitting there on Zoom to tell us that it might be all right. They're just not sure yet. <laughs> yeah, Absent is a non-profit, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, definitely. So is there anything else that you'd like to share with listeners? No, um, I mean, I'm very grateful that you've let me on here for me to waffle on for a <laughs> half an hour. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I just, I really want to get the word out. Last night, I, I had a, a mutual friend on my Facebook platform. Don't know this girl by, from Adam and she she just put on that she, could, she couldn't smell anything. And then all of a sudden, four weeks later, it was, it was all wrong and everything was wrong and the onions were upsetting her. And I mean, I don't even know this girl, but I felt the need to just say it's, it's perosmia. It's honestly, you, you're going to be fine. I hope, but you're going to be fine. And I just, I'm very grateful that, you know, I, I can talk about it and I can tell people that it'll be all right. We're not, well, I hope we're not, we're not, we're not all going to die from this. And that, you know, if the more of us that are in this, the, the more likely we are to get some research a little bit quicker. And I'm very, very grateful for that. Yeah, and in the meantime, I just annoy the hell out of my daughter by saying, is this all right? Does this smell all right? Does this taste all right? Are you sure this is all right? <laughs> yeah, we definitely need people in our lives who can help us. So yeah. I think that's pretty common too. Yeah. So last question for you is how can listeners find you on social media? Uh, my name is Sasha Maud. Um, very originally, I, it is the same. Um, I'm on Instagram and Facebook as Sasha Maud. And I am on all the COVID related um, perosmia and anosmia sites. And I will help anybody out I can by reassuring them that they are not alone and that, you know, something will be done at some point. Well, thank you so much, Sasha, for coming on and sharing your story. It was great to speak with you. All right. Thank you, Katie. Have a good day.